um, thank the Lord for all of you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hey, Mary. <laughs> and so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Fighting for the Best. Hmm. And by that, I mean fighting for the best for you and for your family. Amen. Uh, I know that God has promised you many things. And the question is, have you received what he has promised you? Mm, hallelujah. Or have you received what he has for you mm. and for your family? Uh, we're talking about fighting tonight. You, you know, the Bible talks about blessing those who overcome. Well, mm -hmm, but to mm -hmm. overcome, you have to fight. Fight, are, fight, fight. There are many different blessings, and I'm not going to go into those tonight, but I just want you to know that there are many blessings for those who overcome. But to overcome, you have to fight. And we have some enemies. We have, and I'm going mm -hmm. to just mention those enemies in a moment. But God has made you promises, made promises to you and to your family. And uh, but a promise given is not a promise activated. And so if you know what he has promised you or what he's willing to promise you, you need to activate that and to fight for it. Mm -hmm. It's worth fighting for. You know, anything that God promises you, it's worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can't just let it just sit there and not come to pass in our lives. We need to fight for it. We have enemies. And those enemies want to stop the uh, blessings, want to stop the promises of God happening in your life. And so if it weren't for the enemies and uh, you just had this uh, free-flowing channel between you and God, I mean, the promises would, would come and come freely. But you have to fight for them to overcome, mm -hmm. to receive the promises. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, how do we receive God's best? And hallelujah, about hallelujah. His best for you and his and your family in particular, but it extends much wider than yes, that. It amen. relates to your community, your city, uh, your nation, and, and on and on. Uh, so how do we receive God's best? <clears throat> and uh, we're going to, first of all, just mention that there are enemies uh, that want to prevent you uh, from receiving God's best or from the from receiving the promises of God. Uh, there are three enemies, your flesh, the world, and the devil, and his cohorts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll start with your flesh. Well, uh, and what is your flesh? Uh, well, let's think about Romans 8, 7. It says a mind set on flesh, mm -hmm. fleshly mm -hmm. things or carnal things, flesh is hostile Ooh, to God. Well, that. if it's hostile to God, it's an enemy to you. Mm. It's an enemy and it cannot uh, obey the commandments of God. It, it, it's not subject to his commandments and it cannot. The, host, the mind set on flesh or the deeds of the flesh so what are the deeds of the flesh? Well, we see that in Galatians 5, verses 16 uh, through 21. It, it talks about uh, the deeds of the flesh, and it starts with a bunch of I words. Uh, immorality, impurity, mm. indecent behavior, Woo! idolatry, mm. witchcraft, and it goes on and on. There are lots and lots of different things. That's that's the things in the flesh. That's in the carnal realm. That's in the natural realm. Uh, and all of those things, if our mind is thinking about those desires, fleshly, carnal desires, <clears throat> then it's not subject to God's commands, and it cannot obey. Mm. It's not just it doesn't want to, it cannot. Um, mm. The carnal mind cannot obey the spirit of God. Oh, that's right. Because we have to be spiritual to obey the spirit and the things of the spirit. So the first enemy we have is our own flesh. Mm -hmm. And we were born mm -hmm. with it. And we never get away with it from it. What we have to do is crucify it. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. often? Daily. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul talked about 
crucifying the flesh daily. So it's always going to be there. It's going to try to raise its head. And so if you haven't crucified it lately, it's still there and it's still active. Sherry may have something. And this is what I say to my flesh. <clears throat> Shut up and sit down. That's what I say to my flesh. Shut up and sit down. Hallelujah. So let me just remind you again and go over it again. Immorality, impurities, uh, indecent behavior, idolatry, mm. witchcraft, and on and on. All of those things. We, we know those things. And if it's a, see, we said in uh, Colossians 3, 3, verses 1 through 3, it talks about putting your affections on things above. I mean, well, a fleshly, yeah. fleshly mind is not putting the, its affections on the things above, but the renewed mind can do that it can put its affections on things above where oh, god is, is, is where the holy where jesus is seated at the right hand of the father so our first enemy is our own flesh and uh, it never goes away so you have to put off the old man put on the new man you have to do it mm -hmm. daily. daily crucify the flesh daily and those that are uh in christ have crucified their flesh Okay, the second enemy that we all have is the world. Uh, I mm -hmm. believe it's James uh, 4 4 that talks about to be a friend of the world, listen to this, mm. is an enemy, is hostile to God. Ooh. So if you become a friend of the world, or in other words, you have you love what the world offers you. Uh, that's a friend of the world. If you love mm -hmm. the things of the world more than you love the things of God, the things that are above, uh, that's world and that's uh, worldly thinking. And that's uh, the world is your enemy because it's an enemy to God. And, and so we are, listen to this. Jesus said that we are in the world, but we are not of, of the, the world. world. So we, yes, we're walking on the earth. We're walking in the world, but we belong to heaven. Our citizenship is above yeah, in you. heaven. And so that's the reason we need to put our affections on things above and not on things of the earth. Okay, so the first two enemies are our own flesh mm -hmm. or the world, and that's everything around us. And the third enemy is the devil. First Peter 5, 8 says your enemy, the mm, devil. Oh, <laughs> that makes it pretty clear. What is he doing? He's roaming, roaming around about. trying to find somebody to devour. That's right. That's now, that's Jesus right. said uh, the thief comes, and he's talking about the devil, mm -hmm. the, to steal, kill, and, and destroy. destroy. So the devil... It, is your enemy he's trying to steal from you kill you and destroy uh, everything about you that's the devil you have an enemy now he's not alone though mm -hmm. uh, uh, ephesians 6 chapter 12 uh, chapter 6 verse 12 uh, says that there are principalities and powers, powers and uh, rulers, rulers of the darkness of this world. Mm. Why is the world? Why is the world an enemy to God? Because it has rulers over it, rulers over the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness. So we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we are fighting against principalities, powers, powers. rulers of the darkness mm. of this world, and the spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have. Uh, three general categories of enemies mm. that try to prevent us from receiving the promises of God. All of those, they try to uh, create obstacles in our way and hindrances mm -hmm. uh, to keep us from receiving the promises of God. A and okay, so why do we need to fight? Because you have enemies. Yeah. A and to overcome, you have to overcome your enemies and you have to overcome the obstacles. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about promises tonight and walking in the promises of God, what God has promised you. Uh, and what what am I talking about there? Well, I, I mean, it may be healing, maybe a sound mind, mind. It, might be, it might be peace, 
It um, might be family members that need the Lord. And, and, and it's about the things of your family. Uh, they may need uh, peace. They may need healing. They may need prosperity. Uh, they may need good jobs, careers, uh, all of these kinds of things, uh, uh, relationships, positive relationships, strong relationships. And, and so if you're lacking in any of those areas of either you or your spouse or your children, uh, lacking in any of the things that God has promised you, uh, because he has good things. He only has good things. He wants he to has give the you, best. He wants to give you the good things. He does not withhold any good thing. He wants you to have the best, but you've got to fight for it. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's the bottom line of this message. God wants to give you the best. Yes, amen. Better than anything you could the, think the, or imagine. You know, the best family, the the best marriage, the the best income, uh, the best work situation. He wants to give you the best in every area of your life. But you have enemies that are going to try to keep you from getting those. And so this message says we have to fight for them. So we know that we get blessings and promises if we overcome. Uh, but now I've told you what it is that you have to overcome. You have to <laughs> overcome the enemies. Uh, and the only way you can overcome is by fighting. And so I've got a yeah. couple of verses I'm going to ask Sherry to read there in Timothy about fighting. So let's start uh, first. Uh, go ahead in First Timothy. Okay, First Timothy six twelve, and this is from the New American Standard translation. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, I want to just pause here uh, because in another translation, the message, this talks about the rich life, the, mm. the righteous life, the life of wonder, the life wow, of faith wow, and love. And wow. so I'm asking you, is that the way you describe your life, that you have a life of wonder, a life of faith, a life of love? Mm -hmm. That's what I want. I want that life. And, mm -hmm. and, and we've got to uh, catch hold of it and fight for it. it, it it's just not going to fall on us uh, like apples from a tree. We've got to fight mm -hmm. for it. It's there. A life of wonder, of, of amazement, uh, of so being so close to the Lord, mm -hmm. walking in the promises of God. Extraordinary. That, that it's an extraordinary life, a life of mm -hmm. wonder and amazement. That's what's available for you. That's what's available for your spouse and for your marriage and for your children and for the people around you. But some of the people are not walking in that kind of life. They get so involved in the things of this world and get pulled down by the cares of this world that's right. and they're not able to receive the harvest and the promises and the blessings that God has for them. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to be you. I want you to walk in that life of wonder and amazement. Amen. But it takes a fight. It's a fight. Mm -hmm. It's an everyday fight. Uh, the daily crucify your flesh yeah, well that's a daily yeah, thing now yeah. the flesh doesn't want to die that's right it, it wants to keep rising up well, yes and reminding you of all the old things you've thought it has about a voice and, and all of the uh of the sins that you've created and all of the hurts that you've uh had and i wants to remind that's what the flesh wants to do it wants to remind you of all of those things uh, and, and the devil, see, he, he wants to put you down. He wants to mm -hmm. steal everything you have. He wants to kill you. Uh, he wants to destroy you. You've got to put him in his place. See, we have three enemies, but we also have three conquerors. Hallelujah. What, what conquers the flesh? Well, the spirit of God. Spirit of God. Well, they, they're opposed to each other, but it's the spirit that will overcome your flesh. And what about the world? Well, God overcame the world. God, God so, so loved, loved the, world. the world. He gave his only begotten son. So it was the father uh, that overcome, overcomes the world. Uh, he, he, he made provision so you can overcome the world. And, and finally, uh, Jesus defeated the yeah, devil amen. and all of his imps all at the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Great victory. So 
not only do you have three enemies, but you have three, three conquerors. conquerors. And so, uh, and they want to work through you and they want to bring you the victory and bring you the promises, but you have to pro have to fight. And here's another verse about fighting. And this is from 2 Timothy. All right, Sherry. 2 Timothy 4, 7, also from the New American Standard. I have fought the good fight. And this is Paul speaking. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Oh, hallelujah. I want us to look at this first. This is one of the last things he wrote. This is one of the last things, things that he said that we have heard from Paul. I have fought the good fight. You know, he's not a he's not a pessimist at this point. He's not mm -hmm. he's not saying, Woe is me. He said, I, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. Hallelujah. I have kept the faith. Now, those are just perfect tenses that that this is this is a man of victory, the person who has overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he has fought the good fight. Now he's finished the course. Now the same thing is going to happen to you. You've got to fight the good fight in order to finish your course. See, the devil doesn't want you to finish your course. Your flesh doesn't want you to finish mm -hmm. your course, doesn't want you to fulfill what God has for you, but you've got to fight the faith. Fight the good fight, fight of faith, faith to finish the course, and you've got to keep the faith. Fight the good fight of faith and finish the course, and so you might say, well, I'm just oppressed every day. I'm just under so much stress and and I can't uh, keep my head above the water. Well, you've got to fight. You've got to fight mm -hmm. with faith. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, something that uh, you can just think is going to just happen to you to receive all the promises if, you, if you're not doing anything. You have a responsibility to fight the good fight to finish your course and keep the faith. These are very important things, but I want you to know that you're not alone. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? You're not alone because Jesus gave you a partner in the battle. Mm. So your battle partner is the Holy Spirit. Woo, glory. He's, Hallelujah. He's called your helper. Amen. So God has made you all these promises, promises that you don't haven't even heard of yet, but Promises, that some of which you've heard of and some you haven't heard of yet, but he wants to give you uh, so many uh, promises, such a great inheritance. And he wants mm -hmm. you to have it here on the earth. He wants mm -hmm. your marriage to be blessed yes. on the earth. He wants your children to be blessed on the earth. I mean, he, he wants you, you to be blessed now. It's not Hallelujah. in the sweet by and by when you get to heaven. He wants you uh, blessed now. Uh, so it's a, a life of wonder that he wants you to live. Mm -hmm. Get get out from that uh, rock. Uh, so many people just feel like they're carrying a rock around, uh, mm -hmm. but you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision that the, the world is trying to weight you down. Woo, uh, that's, the, it, that's it, a word. It's trying to hold you back. That's right. Keep you back away mm -hmm. from the good life, the life of wonder and amazement that Jesus Christ Hallelujah. died on the cross Hallelujah. to give you. It's a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful <laughs> life. And he wants to give you a life of wonder and amazement and just walk in his blessings and walk in his promises every day. And everything every day is new and his mercies are new every day. Supernatural Hallelujah. blessings. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm not just talking about the things that you earn on your own by your strength and your wisdom and your uh, your intellect. I'm talking about God wants to pour blessings upon you, and that's not by your strength. No, it's no. by the Holy Spirit pouring out those blessings upon you by grace. Grace is a gift. <laughs> it's a gift. Amen. God Amen. wants to want you to walk in grace. Amen. He doesn't want you beat down. He doesn't want you so busy that you are uh, doing tasks uh, mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. time you get up in the morning till the time you get 
and you go to bed at night, you're just doing menial tasks mm -hmm. and living a menial life. Mm -hmm. he wants checking to, off your list. He wants you to live an abundant life. Jesus Hallelujah. said, I have come. And now the devil, is, he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come mm -hmm. that you might have life and have, have it, it more abundantly. More abundantly. Love it. An abundant life. I call that a life of wonder and amazement. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You can have it. You've got to make some changes, though. If you're not walking in, if your marriage is not like that, if your marriage is not a marriage of wonder and amazement, mm. if your children are not living a life of wonder and amazement, then there's got to be some changes. And that's what we're going to talk about. How do we walk in the promises? How do we fight? For the promises and receive the promises that God has. Mm, hallelujah. Well, I want to hallelujah. tell you that God has sent you a helper to do oh, it. Oh, amen, amen. To bring forth the promises of God. He sent you a helper. John 16, verse 7, Jesus said, sending you the comforter. It's to your advantage mm, that I go. go what? My. Because I'm going to send you a helper. Mm. He's the comforter. Hallelujah. Now, in the Greek, it's the word paracletus. And uh, it comes from a term paraclete, uh, Greek. And, and when the uh, Greece sent out soldiers they would send a soldier and with him, they would send another soldier and the other soldier they would call a paraclete because he was a helper and a supporter. Mm. So they would always go out two by two. And if they mm, were attacked, mm, mm. these two soldiers would help each other and they, would, they would protect their back and protect their mm. blind side. Mm. They were paracletes. They were called, called paracletes. Mm. Now, Jesus said that he was sending us the paraclete or the paracletus. It's one, the paracletus. And he's going to be your comforter, your counselor, Lord. your helper, your uh, advocate your intercessor your Ooh, strength hallelujah. and your standby mm. so it so he does all of these things he's helping you so to receive the promises and to receive the rich abundant life that jesus came to die to give you then we need this helper that i'm talking about the paracletus and, and he's going to be your comforter your counselor your helper your advocate your intercessor your strengthener and your standby. He's going to help you. It's just like having that Greek soldier uh, walking beside you. He's always got your back. He's mm -hmm. always watching mm -hmm. uh, over your blind side. He, he's going to help you receive what God has for you. That's mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, it's to your advantage that I go away because if I'm Don't here, you know. if I'm here, I can't send you the Holy Spirit. But if I go away, I will send you uh, the promise of the mm -hmm. Father. I'm going to send you this paracletus that I'm talking about. He's going to help you. He's going to aid you. He's going to assist you to receive the promises. Now, that's really important. Oh, but that's not the only time he's mentioned as the helper. That also in Romans 8, 26. Mm, mm, In the Romans mm. 8, 26, again, he's called, and I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, he's called uh, a helper. And, and in this case, he says, you don't know how to pray as you ought to. But he, the helper, oh, the helper, oh, hallelujah, the paracletus, hallelujah. the paracletus, the counselor, the, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the uh, advocate, the intercessor, the Standard. strengthener, and the standby, all of those seven terms, he, that's who he is. He, he, he's there to help you and aid you and to show you how to pray, okay? So what are we looking at today? How to receive the promises. We're going to have to fight for them, but we've got somebody that's right there with us all the time. It's just like those two Greek soldiers. Mm, mm. 
One had the back of the other one. Mm, that's good. That's one good. covered the blind side. So nobody mm -hmm. sneak up on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. and, and so this Holy Spirit that I'm talking about, he is here to help you receive the promises. Now, how do you receive the promises? Well, there has to be some prayer here. I'm talking about Amen. prayer. Amen. We don't know how to pray. So we've got to find out. And there is one who will teach us how to pray in whatever situation you're in. See, what most believers want to do, they simply want to say, I've got a problem. Uh, some, I need God to help me fix the problem. But that's not the way God sets this up. You have a soldier who goes with you. Oh, hallelujah. Paraclete. Hallelujah. So we call him, Jesus called him the paracletus. Mm -hmm. And he he's going to help you. And the way he's going to help you here, he's going to teach you how to pray in any particular situation. You always say, I don't know how to pray. Holy Spirit, teach me how to pray in mm -hmm. this situation. Mm -hmm. We need to teach take, me what to pray. We need mm -hmm. to we need to get God's perspective on things. How does God want us to pray? Because when we pray the way God wants us to pray, there is a releasement of the power Whoa, of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, the hallelujah. The promises. See, it's the promises. It's the power of God that brings forth the promises. You cannot bring forth the promises of God out of your own strength, out of your own ability, out of your own intellect. It has to be by the power of God. Mm -hmm. It says all of the promises come by the power of God. And the only way mm -hmm. that the power is released is we have to know how to pray. So if, you, if God has promised you something and you haven't received it yet, if you're having difficulty receiving it, I'm going to tell you why you're having difficulty receiving what God has promised you. A promise given is not a promise activated. activated. You have to activate it. You have to fight for, for yeah. So the way to do it is to spend time with the Lord, seeking the Lord, seek first the kingdom of God and, and let him reveal to you his perspective on your situation. If you have problems going on in your body, you seek the Lord. Let him tell you and explain to you how to pray. Whose role is that? That's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He will show you how to pray in each and every situation. And when you pray the way he tells you to pray, then the power is released and the promise, and the promise comes forth. And God's best comes forth. We're Ooh. wanting to find out today how to receive God's best. We do it by that relationship with the Holy Spirit that just like those two Greek soldiers go out there to fight a fight and, and they're called, uh, one is the soldier, the other is the paraclete, he's the helper, the aide, and they fight side by side. And that's the way it is with you and the Holy Spirit. Mm. You are going out there to fight a fight. You've got a promise for you or you're in your body or uh, about your marriage or about your spouse or about your children. You've got a promise. You've heard the promise. Now you've got to pray about it. And, and, but you, but God has sent someone to go with you, and that's the paracletus. That's the Holy Spirit. He's your comforter, your counselor, your helper, your advocate, your intercessor, your strengthener, strengthener and, and your, your standby. Stand He's your help. He's your aid. He's going to show you how to pray. You pray that way. The power is released and the promise comes forth. Woo, <coughs> glory. <coughs> Hallelujah. To receive the promises. For the promises to be confessed, to be manifested, you have to confess God's word. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how salvation comes. It says that in Romans 10, 9 and 10. You know, if we will confess him, uh, then he will become our, our savior and Lord. Well, we also confess the word of God in order to receive his best. So you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. 
believe in your heart and confess with your mouth what the Lord is showing you, what the, how the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you. you. You confess those things. So if you want the promises of God to be manifested in your life, begin confessing God's word, what mm. relates to that situation. Amen. Now, Amen. let's think about Sherry for a moment. God gave her a promise when she had uh, cancer, and the, and the doctor said she's going to die from cancer. What did the Holy Spirit show you? Well, he he gave me a scripture. He gave me a verse in the in the in Psalms, and I had to at, literally get up and look it up because I knew it was the Holy Spirit that was speaking to me, but I didn't I didn't know where that scripture was. And sure enough, it was in Psalms one eighteen. <laughs> Verse 17 that says, I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And that was a promise to me uh, concerning this situation. And it was also something that I could fight with. It was something that I could take hold of. And every time a bad report would come back from the doctor, another test would, would show that I had uh, medullary carcinoma, the second highest malignant thyroid cancer. <laughs> Every time a test would come back and it would show that it would, and the doctors would continue to uh, speak that over me, uh, then that scripture would come up in me and, it, and the Holy Spirit would bring it back to my remembrance and, and I would confess it out of my mouth and believe it in my heart. And, and that's exactly what got rid uh, of the cancer in my body. Okay. To manifest the promises of God in your life, you have to be confessing God's word. Amen. And this is where the fighting comes. That's just what Sherry was talking about. She fought. That's always the way she fought. Mm -hmm. When she got a bad report, she would she would confess. Yeah, confess the word. The word, what God had revealed to her. Okay. So this is what Paul wrote Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.18. He said, uh, fight the good fight with the prophecies mm. that have been given. Hallelujah. Or in other words, Hallelujah. you've received some promises. Maybe they have been by prophecy. Maybe they have been what God has spoken to you. Fight the good, good fight, fight by, by using what God has promised you, either spoken directly to you or spoken to you through a prophecy. Use that to fight the good fight of faith. Confess the promises. Confess the mm -hmm. word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another verse that, that supports that, and that is uh, Matthew 10, 27. What you've heard whispered in the ear, ear you proclaim from the house rooftop, the housetop. Proclaim it. So you've got to be some confessing some things. And, and so this is not just about, oh, I've received a promise and, a promise, and so I don't have to do anything. And, and I'll give you an example of uh, some people that mm. that uh, we've tried to work with in recent months, and uh, their son had uh, had a head-on car accident uh, and was uh, injured very, very seriously in a lot of different ways. And uh, his mother uh, had received a promise that uh, that God was going to restore him, and his dad received a mm -hmm. promise that God was going to restore him. Okay, so they had those two promises. That's all, thought all they had to do. They thought, well, that's all I have to do. I have, mm -hmm. I've received that. Well, I tried to counsel them, and I, I said, you need to come into agreement about where he goes and where he, what uh, type of treatment, uh, treatment he, he receives. You know what the mother said to me? I will not agree with my husband. Oh, yeah. It could be, but she's thinking, well, God gave me a promise, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to agree with my husband on where, where they're going to send my son. I, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine that a mother would make a statement like that. I'm not going to agree with my husband about what my or what treatment they're going to have for, for my son. See, they needed to fight for their son, their son to be I mean. restored. Both of them had received a promise to uh, from God, but they haven't seen those promises uh, manifested. manifested no they haven't well and that's pretty clear they they refuse instruction they're they are uh 
uh, arrogant and uh, hard-hearted, mm -hmm. and, and they refuse to come into agreement, even though God has given them uh, the instructions and the blueprint on what needs to be done, and they're refusing to do it. They're refusing mm -hmm. because they are heady and high-minded and mm -hmm. will not take instruction and will not follow what the Holy Spirit is telling them to do. And they're thinking, oh, everything's going to be okay. But they haven't. The promises haven't been manifested. Mm -hmm. When you hear the Lord whisper to you in your ear, you begin to confess it. Amen. You begin to proclaim Amen. it Amen. from the housetop. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know about you, but this is a this is a message that has has touched our hearts and 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 stirred us up uh, into. Uh, Lord, we want to operate uh, more in, in your faith. We want to operate uh, and have a, a, a greater relationship with the Holy Spirit. So it's, it has stirred us. And so I pray that it stirs you up.